What's up guys, my name is Karol and welcome to Ads Courses, a place where you can learn the best digital marketing practices and web analytics tricks. Today you will learn how to segment and split your campaigns and ad groups so that your account won't get messy and chaotic, especially on a large and complex Google Ads account. If you want to watch more tutorials like that, don't forget to click the subscribe button. I'm going to show you a different campaign and account structures for different business types and different situations. You need to keep in mind that these are only examples that you can and sometimes you should modify based on your niche and your needs. But there are some basic rules and guidelines that you always should follow. Okay, so let's start with search campaign structures. This is the first example. It's not my favorite, but it can work just fine, especially when you have a lot of campaigns on your account. This example shows only one campaign, but you should have, of course, more than one campaign. So here we have this campaign with related keywords in it. And in this strategy, you have all keyword match types inside of this campaign. You simply split match types into different ad groups. So you have an exact match ad group, a phrase match ad group, and a broad match ad groups with related keywords in them. And in the phrase match ad groups and broad match ad groups, you would place an exact match negatives on an ad group level from the exact match ad group. So the fact that you have to add these negatives on an ad group level may be a little problematic. So that's why I like this strategy more than the previous one. And here you split your match type of the same keywords into separate campaigns. So we've got an exact match campaign with exact match ad groups. And we have a broad and phrase match campaign with broad and phrase match ad groups. And here you just place the exact match negatives on a campaign level. So it's way faster and easier to optimize. And with this strategy, it's way easier and faster to optimize and keep in control over the exact match keywords. Another structure can be used for automated bidding campaigns. So when you use target ROS or CPA in 2019, it can work really well. And I know that for many people, this structure may be controversial, but here you use only broad match keywords with modification and without modification. And why this structure may work for automated bidding strategies? It's because automated bidding strategies bid on a search term level, not on keyword level. So normally with manual bidding, you have your keywords and you change bids on your keyword level. But with automated bidding, the system modifies the bid on a search term level. So it doesn't really matter if you have an exact match keywords separately or if you have a broad match only keywords in your campaigns because it will optimize and change the bids on a search term level. So this is a big factor and that's why this structure may work for automated bidding campaigns. And of course you should focus then on adding negatives into your campaigns and this structure of course works fine when you follow the best automated bidding strategies guidelines. You can watch my other video about this on my channel. Another point is RLSA and the question should I split RLSA or not? And the answer for this question in most scenarios is to not split your RLSA, to keep them as your bid modification inside your general campaign. Because splitting them would actually double your campaign volume. And when you have a lot of campaigns, you don't want to have two times more campaigns. But there are some scenarios when you would want to have an RLSA only separate campaign. And for example, when you have a low budget, uh, but you still want to advertise on expensive keywords and you couldn't afford it to just advertise in general to all the audience, but you can still advertise on these broad or expensive keywords only for your remarketing lists. Another example is when you really want to focus on your remarketing and you don't have uh, too many campaigns or when your conversion funnel is long. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, situations when you have a large account with different services or product lines with different conversion goals and you use automation. And until now, I would suggest to have different accounts for every service with different conversion goals so that the automated systems would work better and because they would know for which conversion they would need to optimize. But from June 2019, you actually have the ability to pick a conversion on a campaign level. So you can actually have one account with different campaigns for different conversions and you can select on a campaign level which conversions do you want to focus on every separate campaign. So that's a huge game changer, something that I waited for for a long time. So right now there is no problem for using the strategy on the left. Next example shows a good basic account structure. Of course, this is just a simplified example. 
In real life, you can have more campaigns than that. It depends on your niche and your account size and your business. But in general, you would have a core campaign with purchase rated keywords, very specific product or service keywords. Then you would want to have a generic keywords campaign for general product keywords or service keywords, more broad than the first one. Another campaign type would be generic brands or models keywords campaign for manufacturer product keywords. So for example, Nike running shoes, etc. Next would be your competition keywords, your brand competition keywords, if you don't mind running campaign like that. And of course, you would have a brand campaign for your brand keywords and DSA or DSA campaigns for any other keywords or long take keywords. And of course, you place your exact match negatives from your other campaigns into the DSA. So this is an example of how you can split your campaigns on account level when you have an e-commerce or you advertise your service. Now let's talk about shopping campaigns. And with time, you should always focus on creating more than one shopping campaign. Of course, you can have one shopping campaign when you use the smart shopping campaigns. But when you use the regular shopping campaigns, it's a good practice to actually split your campaign into, for example, three or four different PLA campaigns. So there are many different solutions when it comes to splitting your PLA campaigns. For example, you may want to have a separate campaign for your bestseller products and a separate campaign for the products that sales are average and separate campaign for products that sell the worst. Another example would be to split your campaigns on a price level. So you can have a separate campaign for the most expensive products, a separate campaign for products with average prices and another campaign for the products with the lowest prices. Another way to do this is to split your campaigns based on the target ROS. So if you have a different target ROS for different products, you can split them using the target ROS. And of course, you can have a separate campaign for your RLSA. And you can use the custom labels to split your campaigns. It's the best way to do this. And the last topic would be the display remarketing and the dynamic remarketing campaigns and how to split them. And of course, there are many ways to do this. And I recommend to have your remarketing campaign and within your remarketing campaign to create ad groups with different remarketing audiences. So just like in this example, we have a cart abandoners ad group, add to cart ad group, product buyers, and the rest. And within each of these ad groups, you can have different remarketing lists with different periods. So for example, three days, seven days, 30 days, 60 days. You don't have to be as much granular as in this example. So it can be seven days, 30 days, or one year. And you can change the bids or the ROS on each of these remarketing lists and in each of these ad groups. I see that a lot of people have their remarketing campaign and just one ad group with every remarketing list in it. And I think it's not the best solution because you can't show a different ads or ad text to these different remarketing lists. So for example, you would want to show a different ad for previous buyers or a different ad to people that, you know, add to your cart or just viewed a product. And you can't do that if you have all your remarketing lists within one ad group. And I think it's just more clean and less chaotic structure. Okay, so now you know the best methods on how to segment your campaigns and ad groups on a large and complex Google Ads account. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment under this video. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and see you in the next one.